Cleopatra would kill you if you took worms out of her Egyptian soils. Aristotle called them the intestines of the earth, and Charles Darwin once said that without this humble creature, agriculture as we know it would be difficult, if not wholly impossible. Worms aerate the soil, filter water, add nutrients, stimulate microbes, and improve agricultural yields. Farmers all around the world are finding ways to increase their worms, and they would never have a reason to take them out. Except in one place. My research is the first systematic study of this special place where 700 million nightcrawler worms are handpicked from farmers' fields and shipped around the world to be sold by the dozen as fish bait. $200 million worth of fish bait. And what fabled land supplies this entire market? All 700 million worms? Southwestern Ontario. On cool, damp nights, while the rest of us sleep, worm pickers strap lights on their head and tin cans on their ankles and scour the farmland between Toronto and Windsor, each picking 20,000 worms a night when conditions are right. So Ontario farmers must ask themselves a question that other farmers would never dare. Should I remove millions of worms out of my soil? There are those who treasure their worms and those who don't, said one farmer who would rather keep the worms in the ground. But worms are buried treasure. I've found that dairy farmers can get over $1,000 an acre for the year from pickers. That's about five times the net income of growing corn, and they pay cash. $90,000 for one farmer who rents the same field to pickers each and every year. Cleopatra would be rolling in her tomb. But soil ecology is complex, and my research shows how no-till farming and massive manure application have turned dairy farms into nightcrawler factories. And far from damaging the soil, one farmer says that cash cropping his worms has actually increased his later corn harvests. What's going on here? Does removing hundreds of millions of worms not affect the soil? Is this sustainable? Who's picking the worms and who's making all the money? My research has, dare I say, opened a can of worms. It shows us how soil and organisms, what we might consider natural, are instead tightly intertwined with historical, social, and economic forces. How ancient glaciers, early settlers, dairy farming, post-World War II leisure time, and the Vietnam War connect soils to worms, to bodies, and to money. My research helps us understand how we continue to shape and are shaped by these subterranean ecologies just inches below our feet. <laughs>